An updated timeline as Hurricane Milton nears Florida coast. Hurricane Milton has strengthened back into a massive Category 5 storm as it churns toward the west coast of Florida, and it could cause widespread damage and destruction when it arrives. The hurricane was located approximately 440 miles from Tampa as of 7 p.m. Tuesday, churning toward the east-northeast as it threatened to make landfall in a heavily populated area of the state. Here's a timeline of what could occur in coming days. Tuesday night. According to the National Hurricane Center, Milton strengthened back into a Category 5 hurricane on Tuesday afternoon, generating sustained wind speeds of 165 miles per hour, with even more ferocious gusts possible. At some point Tuesday, it is expected that the storm will begin to increase in speed as it moves toward Florida, leading to landfall within the next 24 to 36 hours. Wednesday morning. The first impacts of the storm in Florida will really be felt Wednesday morning, with some bands of rain potentially reaching the coast. More importantly, tropical storm force winds are expected to begin arriving on the coast by midday, churning up high waves on area beaches as the hurricane draws closer. In addition, the threat of tornadoes will emerge in the forecast of parts of the Florida peninsula, with that threat increasing as the storm approaches, according to the National Weather Service. Wednesday night. The exact timing of landfall is still up for discussion, but hurricane force winds are expected to begin impacting the Florida coast Wednesday evening. Those winds could occur up to 30 miles from the center of the storm, with tropical storm force winds extending significantly further, up to 140 miles from the center of the hurricane. As the storm makes landfall, it is expected to bring with it devastating storm surges, depending on where tides are when it arrives. Forecasters with the National Hurricane Center are warning of storm surges of up to 10 to 15 feet in an area stretching between the Anclote River and Inglewood including heavily populated areas around Tampa Bay and Clearwater Beach. Large and dangerous waves will also occur with the storm surge, causing even more dangerous conditions near the water. Tropical storm force winds are expected to reach the east coast of Florida by the late evening hours, according to official forecasts. Thursday morning. Heavy rain is expected to continue throughout the morning hours and well into the afternoon, leading to potentially catastrophic and life-threatening flash flooding in many parts of West Central Florida. By the time the storm moves out, rainfall totals of 6 to 12 inches, with localized totals of up to 18 inches, are possible, especially in a stretch of land between Tampa and Orlando, according to the National Weather Service. Thursday could also see tropical storm conditions develop along the coasts of Georgia and South Carolina, with gusty winds and roughly two to four feet of storm surge, according to the National Hurricane Center. Thursday evening. Milton is expected to continue moving away from the coasts of Florida into the evening hours and will start to have greater impacts in the Bahamas, according to forecast models. Flash flooding is still possible in parts of Florida as the storm passes through. Hurricane Milton, monster storm re-intensifies to category five as Florida braces for direct hit. Preparations and evacuations are underway in Florida, where Milton is expected to make landfall tomorrow or early Thursday. Florida residents in Milton's path have been told to get out while they can. Gov. Ron DeSantis and others warned people Tuesday to finish their storm preparations and evacuate as Hurricane Milton approached the state as a Category 5 storm. Milton has the potential to be one of the most destructive hurricanes on record for West Central Florida, the National Hurricane Center said in a forecast discussion. The storm's wind field was forecast to double by the time it moved across the Gulf of Mexico and hit Florida. The National Hurricane Center predicts landfall late Wednesday, but an NBC News forecast predicts landfall slightly later, between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Thursday. Storm surge warnings covered almost the entirety of Florida's western coast, and in an area between Bonita Beach and Chassahowitzka, the inundation will be more than five feet, National Hurricane Center Director Michael Brennan said Tuesday. In a stretch that includes Pinellas County, Sarasota and Tampa Bay, somewhere in this region is going to experience 10 to 15 feet of inundation about ground level, he said. 
the state was preparing for a potentially devastating storm. Power line workers from as far away as California were headed to Florida to help resolve what forecasters said could be extended power outages, DeSantis said. In Pinellas County, areas with half a million people living there have been ordered to evacuate. The city of St. Petersburg expects to get winds of 100 miles per hour, which is greater than what it got during Hurricane Helene. It was less than two weeks ago that Helene flooded parts of the western Florida coast before it made landfall in the Big Bend region as a Category 4 storm, where it would continue on a path that devastated parts of the southeast. Milton will track across Florida from west to east. In Orlando and the surrounding area, forecasters warned of up to 15 inches of rain and said the city and the region face an extreme flooding rain threat. What we know about Hurricane Milton Hurricane Milton, which forecasters say is an extremely powerful hurricane, is expected to roar into Florida tomorrow or early Thursday. With the threat of back-to-back -back hurricanes looming in parts of the state, crews are scrambling to haul away Hurricane Helene's debris before Milton makes landfall. Milton appears headed for Tampa, where the National Hurricane Center is warning of up to 15 feet of storm surge. At around 11 p.m. ET, the storm was about 405 miles southwest of Tampa, with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour. That makes it a Category 5 storm, but fluctuations in intensity are likely, forecasters said. With emergencies declared in dozens of Florida counties and evacuations underway, residents have clogged highways and interstates as they make their way out of the storm's path. NBC News Lite, a lightweight version of NBCNews.com, available in emergency situations when internet connectivity may be limited, has been turned on for readers in Florida, North Carolina, and Tennessee. 17% of Florida's gas stations are without fuel. More than 17% of Florida's nearly 16,000 gas stations are without gas, as residents and visitors scramble to fill up with Hurricane Milton approaching, a website says. Gas Buddy's fuel availability tracker says that, as of 6.30 tonight, 17.4% of the state's 7,912 gas stations were without fuel. The website was activated to help Florida drivers find fuel and power as they prepare for Milton. In some of Florida's most populated cities and area, fuel is even harder to find. Those cities and areas include Tampa and St. Petersburg, with 43.06% of stations without fuel, Fort Myers and Naples, with 27.79 of stations without fuel, and the Orlando and Daytona Beach area, with 14.68% of stations without fuel, according to the tracking site. Map, flood insurance coverage in Florida. About one in six Florida homes, 16% have federal flood insurance, according to an NBC News analysis of National Flood Insurance Program and Census Bureau data. However, among counties in Hurricane Milton's path, about 13% are covered. The NFIP accounts for more than 95% of flood insurance policies nationally. Milton isn't the first hurricane to rebound to Category 5. Hurricane Milton, after it decreased to a Category 4 storm, has gathered its strength and is back to Category 5 with sustained winds of 165 miles per hour, according to a National Hurricane Center advisory. Milton isn't the first hurricane to rebound back to Category 5. According to an NBC News analysis of National Centers for Environmental Information data, nine other hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin have rebounded. Hurricane Camille in 1969. Hurricane Allen in 1980. Hurricane Andrew in 1992. Hurricane Isabel in 2003. Hurricane Ivan in 2004. Hurricane Dean in 2007. Hurricane Felix in 2007. Hurricane Irma in 2017, Hurricane Maria in 2017. Tampa Bay Peninsula has plenty of space left in shelters. Thousands have evacuated to Tampa Bay area public shelters tonight, but the facilities still have room for more. The government of Pinellas County said tonight, on X, there's still time to seek safety, the county said, and there's still room at county shelters. Two more have opened, county officials said at a news conference today. We have 10 public shelters with plenty of space left, including pet-friendly and special needs, it said. You still have time to leave, but the window is closing fast. Zones defined by their coastal or low-lying geography are under mandatory evacuation in the county and represent the ground under an estimated 500,000 residents, a majority, the county has said.
The orders also include those in mobile homes and those with special needs, it said. Pinellas County Emergency Management Director Kathy Perkins said of Hurricane Milton at the news conference, whether it's a direct hit or it moves slightly, we are going to get hit and it's going to be hard. Private plane crashes during evacuation attempt in St. Petersburg. A small private plane crashed just east of the St. Pete Pier in Florida this morning, St. Petersburg police said in a statement. A police officer rescued four passengers and a small dog from the water. The statement said three people were treated at the scene and then taken to Orlando Health Bayfront Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The passengers were trying to evacuate ahead of Hurricane Milton when they crashed because of engine failure immediately after takeoff from Albert Whitted Airport, the statement said. Waffle House announces Florida closures as part Waffle House Index. Always open restaurant chain Waffle House this afternoon posted maps of its Florida locations that will be closed in advance of Hurricane Milton, referring to the famous Waffle House Index about a storm's severity. Please stay safe, the restaurant chain wrote on X. A map along with the hashtag Windex showed closures in the Tampa, Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Fort Myers, and Cape Coral areas. The Waffle House Index is a term coined by former FEMA administrator Craig Fugate. It's used as an informal measure of how bad a storm is expected to be or has been because the chain of restaurants, many of which are in the South, are rarely closed. Waffle houses are up and down the interstate systems in Florida. It's a pretty good gauge. Once you get into areas that the waffle houses are closed or have limited menus, you're starting to get into the areas with the impacts, Fugate said on NBC News in 2022 during Hurricane Ian. Time to evacuate is running out as Hurricane Milton closes in on Florida. Hurricane Milton churned Wednesday toward a potentially catastrophic collision along the west coast of Florida where some residents insisted they would stay after millions were ordered to evacuate, and officials warned that stragglers would face grim odds of surviving. The Tampa Bay area, home to more than 3.3 million people, faced the possibility of widespread destruction after avoiding direct hits from major hurricanes for more than a century. The National Hurricane Center predicted Milton, a monstrous Category 5 hurricane, during much of its approach, would likely weaken but remain a major hurricane when it makes landfall late Wednesday. Milton was centered early Wednesday, about 360 miles, 580 kilometers, southwest of Tampa, with maximum sustained winds of 160 miles per hour, 260 kilometer hours, the National Hurricane Center reported. Forecasters predicted the storm will retain hurricane strength as it crosses central Florida on Thursday on a path east toward the Atlantic Ocean. The hurricane's precise track remained uncertain, as forecasters Tuesday evening nudged its projected path slightly south of Tampa. Thousands of fleeing cars clogged Florida's highways ahead of the storm, but time for evacuations was running out Wednesday. Tampa Mayor Jane Castor noted that up to 15 feet meters, of storm surge forecast for her city would be deep enough to swallow an entire house. So if you're in it, basically that's the coffin that you're in, Castor said. Milton targets communities still reeling two weeks after Hurricane Helene flooded streets and homes in western Florida along its devastating march that left at least 230 dead across the south. In the bayside town of Punta Gorda, about 100 miles 160 kilometers, south of Tampa, streets were still filled Tuesday with 5-foot 1.5-meter piles of soggy furniture, clothing, books, appliances, and other trash dragged from damaged homes. Many homes sat vacant, but accountant and art collector Scott Joyner remained on the second floor of the New Orleans-style home he built 17 years ago. Joyner said bull sharks swam in the flooded streets and a neighbor had to be rescued by canoe when Helene passed and flooded the first floor of his home. Water is a blessing to have, Joyner said, but it is very deadly. Joyner said he planned to go another round and ride out Milton, despite the risk. Authorities have issued mandatory evacuation orders across 11 Florida counties, with a combined population of about 5.9 million people, according to U.S. Census Bureau estimates. Officials have warned that anyone staying behind must fend for themselves, as first responders are not expected to risk their lives attempting rescues at the height of the storm. 
In Riverview, south of Tampa, several drivers waiting in a long line for fuel Tuesday said they had no plans to evacuate. I think we'll just hang, you know, tough it out, said Martin Oaks of nearby Apollo Beach. We got shutters up, the house is all ready, so this is sort of the last piece of the puzzle. Others weren't taking any chances after Helene. On Anna Marie Island along the southern edge of Tampa Bay, Evan Purcell packed up his father's ashes and was trying to catch his nine-year-old cat, Mackenzie, as he prepared to leave Tuesday. Helene left him with thousands of dollars in damage when his home flooded. He feared Milton might take the rest. I'm still in shock over the first one, and here comes round two, Purcell said. I just have a pit in my stomach about this one. State and local governments scrambled ahead of the storm to remove piles of debris left in Helene's wake, fearing that the oncoming hurricane would turn loose wreckage into flying missiles. Governor Ron DeSantis said the state deployed over 300 dump trucks that had removed 1,300 loads of debris. In Mexico, authorities in the state of Yucatan reported minor damage from Milton as it passed just offshore. Power lines, light poles and trees were knocked down near the coast, and some small thatched roof structures were destroyed, Yucatan Gov Joaquin Diaz said. He did not report any deaths or injuries. Hurricane Milton on path for Florida landfall as a potentially historic major storm. Hurricane Milton was barreling across the Gulf of Mexico as a powerful Category 5 storm early Wednesday on a path toward Florida's central west coast, where mass evacuations clogged highways as people prepared for the potentially historic impact. It's forecast to make landfall Wednesday night or early Thursday. Some communities, like those in and around the Tampa Bay area, were still reeling from Hurricane Helene less than two weeks ago. Fluctuations in intensity are likely while Milton moves across the eastern Gulf of Mexico, but Milton is expected to be a dangerous major hurricane when it reaches the west central coast of Florida, the National Hurricane Center said early Wednesday. CBS News meteorologist Nikki Nolan said the latest forecast track shows Milton making landfall over or near Sarasota, Florida. I think the most recent models have it somewhere in Manatee County, just south of Tampa Bay, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said in a briefing Tuesday. But I would just tell people, one, we're going to have impacts far beyond wherever the eye of the storm is. Two, you can make landfall anywhere from Citrus County down into southwest Florida. We'll know more over the next 12 to 18 hours. But just cones, all this stuff you see, the impacts will be broader than that, specifically with respect to storm surge. The National Weather Service in Tampa Bay described Milton as a historic storm for the west coast of Florida. That could prove to be the worst to hit Tampa Bay in more than a century. Floridians in the potential path of the hurricane lined properties with sandbags, boarded up doors and windows, and moved their boats ahead of the storm's arrival. DeSantis issued emergency orders over the weekend that now include 51 counties, whose residents, he said, should prepare for power outages, stock up on enough food and water to last a week, and be ready to leave their homes if necessary. According to GasBuddy, as of Tuesday evening, a little more than 17% of Florida gas stations were without fuel, including more than 46% in the Tampa Bay area. Once it makes landfall, Milton is forecast to remain a hurricane as it crosses the Florida Peninsula. It was expected to move off Florida's east coast and into the Atlantic Ocean sometime Thursday. Tracking Hurricane Milton Early Wednesday, Milton was just northeast of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. The Mexican government issued hurricane warnings as forecasters expected damaging winds and a life-threatening storm surge to hit portions of the coast. The hurricane had weakened somewhat since its maximum sustained wind speeds swirled past 180 miles per hour Monday during a rapid period of intensification that the National Hurricane Center called explosive and remarkable. Milton had dropped back down to Category 4 overnight Monday, but by Tuesday night, the storm churned over the Yucatan Peninsula with maximum wind speeds hovering around 160 miles per hour which is above the 157 miles per hour threshold for a Category 5 storm. Forecasters said they expected Milton to retain its status as a major hurricane on its way to the western Florida coast. As of 2 a.m. Eastern Time Wednesday, Milton was located 205 miles west-southwest of the Dry Tortugas, Florida, 
and 360 miles southwest of Tampa. It was moving northeast at 12 miles per hour. A hurricane warning was in effect for the Florida west coast from Bonita Beach north to Suwannee River, including Tampa Bay, and the state's east coast from the St. Lucie Martin County line north to Pontevedra Beach. Multiple areas were also under tropical storm watches and warnings, including portions of Georgia, South Carolina, and the Bahamas. Milton's peak strength rivaled the most disastrous Atlantic hurricanes in recorded history, and happened at breakneck speed. Milton was a tropical storm only 24 hours before it snowballed into a Category 5 hurricane, the highest ranking on the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale, which rates storms based on their sustained wind speeds. It is worth emphasizing that this is a very serious situation, the Hurricane Center said Tuesday morning. Milton has the potential to be one of the most destructive hurricanes on record for West Central Florida. Tampa Bay braces for landfall. The latest forecasts suggest Milton will make landfall either on or near the Tampa Bay or Sarasota areas, likely as a formidable Category 3 hurricane. Although predictions as to Milton's landfall location and timing have oscillated somewhat since Monday, when the storm underwent rapid changes, forecasts have remained fairly steady as far as the hurricane's intensity when it strikes land. Milton's wind speeds at that time are expected to fall to about 125 miles per hour according to the Hurricane Center. For impacted places, that could be devastating. Tampa area streets Tuesday were lined with miles of potentially deadly debris from Hurricane Helene. The goal, according to Tampa Mayor Jane Castor, was to have most of it cleared by Tuesday, but the city fell short on that. Rumors that we don't have enough resources, that could not be further from the truth. Castor said in a news briefing Tuesday, the federal government, the state government, the county, the city, private entities are working hand in hand first and foremost to get that household debris up and out of the way, and secondly to make sure everyone is safe as we endure whatever Milton brings our way. Exactly where the hurricane is centered when Milton arrives on land may determine the extent of the destruction it wreaks on the Tampa Bay area, mainly linked to storm surge, wrote CBS News meteorologist Nikki Nolan. The forecast track with Milton has its sights set on the western coast of Florida, but the position of the center of the storm, or the eye, can determine how catastrophic the impacts are on the Tampa Bay area, Nolan said. The eastern side of the eye is considered the dirty side of the storm, which is where the winds tend to be the strongest. As the forecast track shifts northward, the dirty side then falls over Tampa Bay. That creates more serious risks of storm surge in the region, according to Nolan. Forecasts have warned Milton's arrival could bring potentially life-threatening storm surge to the Florida Gulf Coast, which is particularly vulnerable to severe surges because of its geography, and that is especially true for Tampa Bay. Multiple people died in Tampa from storm surge caused by Hurricane Helene, and that storm did not even hit the city directly. A storm track into or just north of St. Petersburg brings winds that funnel an already high water up into the city. A track just a few miles south actually pulls the water out out of the bay, leading to minimal storm surge. John Antipasis, emergency management director for the city of Tampa, knows just how vulnerable his city is to hurricanes. There's a lot of vulnerable infrastructure here and the geography itself that potentially, you know, puts us just much at more risk, Antipasis said. Antipasis said the storm surge is the one thing that makes him worry at night when he goes to sleep. It's the storm surge on this one, Antipasis said. Ultimately, our first responders, we're going to be here. We're going to try to save lives, protect property first. And then we will go through that recovery process if that does happen to us. Eurydice Stanley rode out Helene in her Tampa area home, but evacuated to Tallahassee Monday. People are staying at home. But these storms are different, ask the citizens of, of Asheville, North Carolina, Stanley told CBS News. And while millions of people in the Tampa area are under a mandatory evacuation and many have left, some aren't going anywhere. Bridget Budd, who resides on Sanibel Island, is among those who says she is staying. Budd and her husband have ridden out for major hurricanes before, including Helene. There's just no place I would rather be, Budd told CBS News. You know, I don't suggest it for anybody, I'm not promoting it. 
Storm surge forecast. Hurricane and storm surge warnings expanded Tuesday to include large sections of Florida's eastern coast, which could potentially see surges up to feet above ground level as Milton tracks inland over the state after making landfall on its route toward the Atlantic. Coastal places in Georgia and South Carolina could experience several feet of storm surge too. Storm surge threats are a major concern for the west coast of Florida. In addition to hurricane warnings, storm surge warnings were also in effect from Flamingo northward to the Suwannee River, including Charlotte Harbor and Tampa Bay. A storm surge warning was also in effect for Florida's east coast, from the Sebastian Inlet in Florida, north to Altamaha Sound, Georgia. The Hurricane Center has warned that storm surge in the Tampa Bay area could reach 10 to 15 feet above ground level. The deepest water will occur along the immediate coast near and to the south of the landfall location, where the surge will be accompanied by large and dangerous waves, the Hurricane Center said in a Monday afternoon advisory. Surge-related flooding depends on the relative timing of the surge and the tidal cycle and can vary greatly over short distances. Forecasts show heavy rainfall, up to 15 inches in certain areas, could cause considerable flash, urban and aerial flooding, along with moderate to major river flooding in parts of the Florida Peninsula, though Thursday. Evacuation zones. Mass evacuations were underway as Florida airports canceled flights, and schools as far south as Miami-Dade, Broward and Monroe counties announced closures ahead of Milton's expected arrival. Thousands fled the Tampa Bay area, and parts of the surrounding region were under mandatory evacuation orders issued Monday and Tuesday. As tens of thousands flee Milton's path, the Georgia Department of Transportation reported that it saw traffic volumes as of 8 a.m. Tuesday on Interstate 75 that were 280% higher than normal between the Georgia and Florida state line. The Port of Key West has closed ahead of Milton's arrival, CBS Miami reports, with cruise ships bypassing the port. Several Orlando area theme parks were also shuttering, including Walt Disney World, SeaWorld Orlando, and Universal Studios Florida. United said Tuesday night that it had added 18 extra flights out of Florida, as well larger aircraft on four of those flights in an effort to serve as many customers as possible. It said all flights out of Tampa, Fort Myers, and Sarasota were full through Thursday. Aviation analytics company Sertium reported that 80% of flights from Tampa were cancelled Tuesday. We are talking about the possibility now of a direct hit, said Tampa Mayor Jane Castor in a CNN interview Monday, where she urged people to heed storm warnings and follow evacuation protocols. Castor noted that storm surge caused by Helene, while destructive, was significantly lower than the surge forecast for a vast stretch of Florida's western coast, including Tampa, with Milton. Helene was a wake-up call. This is literally catastrophic, and I can say, without any dramatization whatsoever, if you choose to stay in one of those evacuation areas, you're going to die, Castor said. President Biden echoed the mayor Tuesday morning as the White House announced he would postpone a trip to Germany and Angola to monitor the response to Hurricane Milton. I've urged everyone, everyone currently located in Hurricane Milton's path, to listen to local officials and follow safety instructions, Mr. Biden said. If you're under evacuation orders, you should evacuate now, now, now. You should have already evacuated. It's a matter of life and death. Mr. Biden said he pre-approved emergency declarations in Florida and sent Federal Emergency Management Agency Administrator Deanne Criswell to the state Monday. The president also said he has spoken to all political leaders in the region, expected to feel Milton's impacts, and told them, Anything they ask for, they can get. Hurricane Milton Live Radar Map This radar loop from CBS Miami shows weather conditions over Florida and the Gulf of Mexico as Hurricane Milton approaches.